And welcome to a brand new edition of Bit Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick, coming to you from the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas, along with my partner, Michael Deeb in San Francisco. And look at this, we got a third nerd today. We've got a panel of one expert and two idiots. What's going on, Andrew? <laughs> And I can't believe that it, I was actually just called an expert, but thank you. Um, <laughs> I mean, look at the source. I, feel so I wouldn't confident feel too now. good yeah. about it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then, then I won't. Yeah, I won't let my head get too big then. But thanks for having me, Andrew Pappas. I can't believe it's taken us two years to get you on the show. I feel like I owe you an apology, but I'm thrilled that you have finally joined us. Somewhere, Jeff Harley and uh, Mark are laughing at us. Uh, you know, the two guys oh, that for used, to sure. work at Fer- used to work at Ferrari together are now hosting a podcast where they're talking about the market. <laughs> Hell has yeah. They're like, Oh, over. look at these idiots. Yeah. We're going to ban him now. Don't let him have his F8. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Well, if you are new to the show, you thought you'd check it out because you heard that Andrew's going to be here. Uh, what we do on the show is we scour all the automotive sites like P car market, bring a trailer cars and bids, you know, all the places where the cars are being auctioned. Uh, we find the most interesting car and that doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive or, uh, even the most rare. It's just that something, uh, you know, we pick the cars that we think are going to kind of inspire the best conversation and are most relevant to the market and what's going on. So we have a conversation about that car and what's going on with its auction. Then we get to the nitty gritty. We come down to predictions. We make a prediction is what's going to happen with that car's auction auction. What will the results be? Uh, we have that discussion and then we go into the future at the end of this episode, make sure you stick to the end because we actually reconcile our idiotic predictions with what actually happened. Uh, so that can get interesting. It's a lot like the price is right. Only instead of predicting the price of a washer and dryer, we're actually talking about cars that are pretty darn interesting. Michael Deeb, shall we get right to the car or should we Abs- first talk about our friends at God and Porsche of Las Vegas? Oh, absolutely. Our sponsor, God and Porsche of Las Vegas, North America's first ever Porsche classic partner. Um, God and Porsche has the experts in the parts department, in the service department and the sales department to help you with either keeping your classic car on the road or help you to find a classic car of your very own. God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Tell them the bid nerds sent you. All right. Well, let's get to the most interesting car of the day. What is it today? Michael D. All right, so John, over on P-Car Market, they have a car that is one of my personal favorites that even real Porsche people in the U.S. don't know very well. And what I'm talking about is a 1976 Porsche 911 Carrera 3, the three liter that they only sold in Europe for two years, 1976 and 1977. No, 75 and 76, I think were the only two years of the um, three I liter. I think you're no, right. I thought, I thought it was only 76. 70, 77. No, 76 and 711, 77 are the only two years of the three liter. So this car is in the United States. It's titled in the U.S. in uh, Illinois. And someone has done a 3.6 conversion. And I thought this would be interesting to look at because once you flip it over to a 3.6 conversion, then the shell just becomes a mid-year, right? I mean, it's just a mid-year Carrera with a with a big 964 motor in it. And well, hold I, on. Hold on, yeah. hold on. I'm sorry, I normally don't interrupt here, but that's not entirely accurate. Um, okay. Look at the 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 thing about this car is it has fender flares like an SC, unlike a mid year car that would have no well, flares. Well, okay, so but but a mid year Carrera would be flared. Uh, right, which is what this is. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying is. Um, what makes this car special is the fact that it came with a three liter, and they took the thing that made this car special and upgrade it to make it kind of a resto mod. Now, I'm not saying it's not a cool car that I wouldn't want to drive the heck out of this thing with a 3.6 in it, but for my money, I'd rather have this car and put the three liter back in it and then sell that 964 motor for 25 or 30,000 bucks, and I think you could do really well on it. So I just thought this would be an interesting car to sort of break down and look at closer. The car's original color was Minerva blue, although it has been repainted some time ago. And the 964 3.6 liter conversion was done about 25 years ago, prior to this owner's ownership of the car. Um, Obviously, it's a Carrera body with the flared hips. 
It has 964 turbo front seats, and it has a roof steering wheel, three-spoke steering wheel that are really cool. JP, you might also notice that it's got the European bumperettes. We only got those bumperettes on 74s. I love that little treatment in the rear end. I think the car looks lighter. I do prefer the European bumpers to the standard ones that come in America. Uh, the car looks to be in decent condition, but obviously the big news is under the hood. It is worth noting that the original three liter motor accompanies the car, but is currently disassembled. So my guess is for the money it would take to sell the 964 motor, you would have to spend all of that cash you just made rebuilding the three liter. But I do think that this car would be a car I'd much rather have with the three liter in it, even though I know it would be an unbelievable car to drive with that 964 motor. So, um, the original motor is deassembled uh, the rear wheels by way of a 915 gearbox. I do believe it's a 915 gearbox. It's still in this car. I don't think they upgraded it to the G50 that would have been originally attached to that 964. If that were the case, this car would be even more special to drive because that's a, that's a pretty slick gearbox. But uh, JP, I'll send it to you first. What do you think of this car? Um, I, I am sure without with 100% certainty, you would never take that 3.6 motor out of this car. I don't think you care about that three liter. I do. That three liter was different than the SC motor. It's basically the turbo block and it makes about 200 horsepower. So that early three liter Euro is better than our later SC. Um, and that's why I would like to have that. But I, I'm the fool that would take the long way around to get to the same destination. So what do you think of this car? What do you think of that color? What do you think of that drivetrain? And then eventually we'll get to what do you think it's worth? Yeah, I I mean, I know the three liter, the earlier three liter is actually better than the SC, but honestly, it's not that much better. And, you know, I mean, with a few mods on an SC three liter, you're basically get almost the same thing. Um, yeah. You know, so I, I've never understood why, you know, the SC came out with the wider fenders. This, I mean... This could never be considered a mid-year car, even though it is a 77, because it's got the flares. I just, it's, it's an SC yeah. edit. Th that distinction just doesn't make any sense. And I don't, I mean, we haven't really seen the three liter mid-years, for lack of a better way to put it, really yeah. bring that big a premium. So I, I know. don't see what the point of swapping, making this, trying to make this original, especially since the paint color has been kind of redone, even though it's sort of the same original color, it doesn't seem like a really good match. Um yeah, I don't know. I, I think this is just a hot rod. If I get if I had this car, I would go full tilt the other way and I would start, you know, pulling the bumpers off and pulling the rocker panels <laughs> off and make it a hot rod. I'm not saying backdate it, but you know, put yeah. RS bumpers on it and you know, lighten the thing up because it has that great engine, uh, and just, you know, ducktail and hot rod. Uh try it's just a weird space. I don't know. This yeah. Makes sense it, to me. It, 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 no, and that's right. It, it's it's always occupied a weird space because this was the successor to the Euro Carrera, um, and it was never brought stateside. And I really think that this car is still lost on the American palette because they just don't know what it is. And I don't think they realize how special that sort of high compression uh, non-turbo motor was. So, uh, Andrew, I know that the air-cooled cars, particularly the G-body cars that came out before you were born, um, <laughs> aren't really your thing. Uh, but what do you think of these cars? What do you? I know you, you're big into hot rodding, like you know, old K5 Blazers and some old American cars. People, yeah. this is a big space where people take these old G-bodies and they put the last generation of the air cooled, the three, six out of the nine, six, four and the three, six right. out of the nine, nine, three into these G body cars. And they are like rocket ships. They're way more powerful than the turbos ever were. So what do you think of this? You know, I think it's honestly, I think it's about halfway to where I would take it. And, and I agree actually with JP about the, um, uh, you know, d finishing the job, hot rodding it. Cause it's, yeah. in my opinion, not to disagree with you, cause everybody has, you know, That's what okay. they would do with a car. But I, I think it's it, that's a car that I, I don't love the color on, but I like the fact that they did that engine swap and the whole thing. I would make it look cool. I would kind of uh, and I would pick a cool like PTS color, probably signal yellow and <laughs> paint it. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I would I would just finish the job hot rodding it is because I love yeah. that stuff. And I love I love yeah. going with a color that I really like. Um, you know, I've always wanted a Porsche in um, uh, Ruby Star. I would probably paint that Ruby star or signal yellow and just drive it every day. If I was, you know, in the market for that car, hundred percent. Interesting. Interesting. I, I All right. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, do you think that pencils out though? I mean, a paint job that, I mean, 
That's well, a you lot of buy money it, to right. do. They it. took the pictures with an iPhone five, so <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, maybe you have some room there. <laughs> well, there is a reason why I'm wearing the P Car Market used car salesman <laughs> tie today. It's in honor of our favorite platform, Love a bunch it. of dirt bags over there. Uh, what do we think the value, or I mean, what do we think the what's going to happen with this car's auction? What do you predict, Michael Beep? So I think this car's DOA on P Car Market. Whatever happens here. My, whatever number I give you, I promise you it will not sell at that number and it'll wind up in the deal tank for like over six figures and it's not going to sell. It'll go 21 days and it'll just rinse out by time. It's not going to sell. Um, our car is sitting at $45,000 on, and let me read it to you. Sorry, I've got my notes here. $45,000 on five bids and it's got a couple of days before it, um, uh, before the hammer comes down on this one. Um, I'm going to give you a bid and I, I just, I'm not confident in this at all. I'm going to say $66,000 and it's FTS and winds up in the deal tank for over a hundred grand. That's my bid. Uh, Andrew, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, just a one quick background question on the car. Um, do we know yeah. if the current owner did the engine or was that done before? It was done 25 years ago. So this is, got it. Okay. If it's, yeah, yeah, you mentioned, it's, okay. it's a tired motor. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this guy, okay. So I would say, I think this car will do, I think it does 69 to 70, like we'll call it 70 grand. And I think okay. it sells there. Cause this guy probably, probably stole this thing. And now he thinks he's going to make a bunch of money. I don't think he's going to make a bunch of money because he probably has a lot into it, but I, I think it'll sell around 70 grand. All right. And JP, what do you say? Yeah, I'm putting my bear hat on. I mean, one thing we haven't really talked about in a, in a second though, is, you know, when we're recording this, it's the, it's the beginning of the week. Uh, and at the time of recording, there's a major announcement coming from the feds tomorrow. Um, the about interest rates, about interest rates, you know, will the fed pivot? Will they raise them? Will they lower them? Will they do nothing? Um, everyone is talking about full scale, uh, banking collapse. And, oh, uh, good. you know, we, I would not want to have an auction ending on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. Um, we, we just don't know how the market is going to uh, react to this and, and what their decision is. If they make one decision, you've got uh, a bunch of banks that are going to be insolvent. You know, that's if they raise the interest rates. If they lower the interest rates, then you've got pretty much massive, another round of massive inflation coming. So the big thing is, you know, what I think the result of a lot of inflation will wind up being is not just higher prices where, where, you know, another bubble gets, you know, uh, inflated. I think we wind up in a, in a pretty bad stagflationary period where prices go up, but sales don't happen. Um, you know, where people are just sitting around on money. So, because how do you really figure out what something's worth when prices are way up because of inflation? You know, um, Andrew, we talk about this all the time. I'm a broken record, but if you bought a car for $100,000 last year and you sold it for $110,000 this year, did you make any money? Uh, the answer is no, because inflation has been around 10%. So you're flat at 110, uh, at 110 increase uh, over the course of a year. We just don't know what's going to happen this week. I think a lot of people are going to be sitting on their wallets regardless. Um, so yeah, I'm going way under. You're saying it's at 45 right now, Michael? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, if this thing hits 55, I'd be pretty shocked. So I'm going to say, uh, yeah, 52 uh, and just be really, 52. Really yeah. Wow. And, and, and FTS, of course, yeah. because the other side of this car too is like you guys both, you know, said because it's a weirdo, it doesn't appeal to the purists. Right. So if mm -hmm. you're, if you want that three, 3.0, you know, it's a repaint, it's the wrong engine. Uh, and, and, and so, okay, well that guy doesn't want this thing. Um, the guy that wants a hot rod is going, well, I got to finish it, which means, you know, I got to do the bumpers and all that kind of stuff. If it did have the cool bumpers and a, you know, meatball and a livery and cool wheels and stuff like that, you know, okay, yeah. You know, yeah. then it's then it's a thing, but right now it's not appealing to either kind of one. No it's, man's land. Yeah, yeah, it's as yeah. boring as a as a purist as the purest of purest cars, <laughs> uh, but not interesting to the pure guys, and not a hot, not interesting the hot rod, even though it's got the cool engine. If you could get it by this low, this would be a great car to get into because a three six nine six four engine in this uh, this would be a lot of fun to finish off and and be absolutely. Um, Andrew, we're, what, we're um, always. 
we're always wrong on this show, so for sure this car is going to sell for like eighty nine thousand bucks or something. Watch. <laughs> well, you know what? At, at the end of the day, it's, it's not all about being right or wrong, but it's it's definitely fun to kind of go back and forth because I feel like you guys obviously have a lot of input, and then if somebody says something after I do, or you know, like like you just did. Uh, JP, yeah. uh, it's it's interesting because I didn't think of any of those things, and you know you're a hundred percent right about an auction ending this week. Period. Like it's yeah, it's definitely scary. And, I've found Fridays and, are a good day to end, regardless. But you know, and, with Andrew's bringing a a multi million dollar Koenigsegg to BAT that starts on Wednesday. Andrew, what uh what model is that car, and and what's the range you you would give that car? It's a Regera. It's a twenty twenty one Koenigsegg Regera. And it's a wild color combo, like gold and black wheels with uh, um, like a really turquoise blue kind of a, a color scheme. Oh, um, wow. And uh, it's it's been photographed uh, by Bats photographers. Yeah. So I, I didn't bring it here to, um, you know, because I have I have Ted Seven, who I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He, he takes really good pictures of cars, but obviously the cars, you know, I'm, nobody's going to ship a Koenigsegg for photos. So yeah. <laughs> I had sent somebody to his house to take the pictures. And um, the way they told me it's with the premium listing, they like to space them out a little bit because it should have been live a few days ago. But it's going to be a 10-day auction. I think it'll go live probably tomorrow, Thursday at the latest, but I would say more than likely Wednesday. So that'll be a fun one to cool. watch. And I think the range, MSRP is 3.5. So obviously everybody that's bought one of these cars hopes for that, but the guy is not you know, completely unrealistic. So if it goes a little under that, I think it'll probably still sell, but we'll see. Hopefully, wow. hopefully in the mid threes to give you a range. All right. Well, good luck yeah. with all the news coming out this week. I think you're probably you. better off it coming out like a week and a half from now or set, you know, closing a week. And closing. A half from now. Cause closing. hopefully yeah, things yeah, will with, settle with down and people will be like, all right, okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, there's, yeah. I, I see some panic here coming this week. Um, you know, that said, uh, PCAR market being known to really just be interested in themselves and no one else, um, they are going to put a lot of pressure on this seller at the time of close to try to get them to lower the price if it doesn't meet whatever the reserve happens to be. And I can absolutely see those guys um, wielding uh, the <laughs> headlines uh, in – to favor themselves, not necessarily the Doom seller. Doom and gloom. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I could, you know, because honestly, if I'm if I'm the seller and you wind up having this thing close on a on a crappy day like that when there's really bad news, I would rather not sell. I'd rather just be stuck with a car and okay, great, fine. I'll just have a nice car uh, during the apocalypse as opposed to uh, <laughs> letting it go. Yeah. Uh, honestly, for too little money in a in a period where money's all of a sudden going to be worth way way less uh, the next day, it's like okay. So I can see P car market just going, yeah, sell it lower and trying to drive. You know, what do you think of that? You've had some experience with that kind of thing. Um, you talking to Deeb or me? Sorry, uh, I'm talking you. to you, Andrew. Sorry, yeah, with uh, with okay, P car market. Sure, sure. I didn't want to. Wanna, uh, I didn't want to take over for Deeb there because he was going to say something. But yeah, no. Um, yeah. yeah, I've I've been pressured on almost everything I've sold, or I'm sorry, I, I've never sold a car on there, um, and that goes as low as a Cobra R that I owned. That I ended up selling on BAT. Uh, actually, well, hold no, on, hold on. I bought it. You tried to sell a couple of cars on PCAR Market and failed. Several. Yeah, several. I've never okay. done one sold. Once I had one, one sold car on there. If you look at wow. my account, I mean, it's only a few cars. But um, yeah, I, I ran a Cobra R. I ran a GT500. Uh, K, uh, not, not a, yeah, the King of the Road, the 2008 one. And then I ran a TDF and then a Pista. And I think a couple other ones. And I've never sold a car on there. But I, what I have noticed is like the amount of like, you know, end of the auction phone calls you, you, you get saying, oh, you know, you, these things are tanking. You need to take this now. You need to call your seller. Let's get them on the phone. I, I'm like, dude, this is, feels like I'm getting four squared out of Toyota a lot, you know? So, um, <laughs> yeah, so. it's, uh, it's just not fun dealing with those guys. They really are like dealing with a used car salesman. And that's no fun. Um, four yeah. squared at a Toyota lot. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> For anybody that uh, knows anything about the car business, he's talking about oh, yeah. when, when they yeah. let, let me go talk to my manager while the salesperson yeah. eats a donut and, <laughs> it, and the sales manager yeah. tries to figure out it, what tier they're in. And to if, see if I could, would you? Yeah. No, no, that's car? exactly. I yeah. mean, it just that yeah. just is a bad look these days. There's better ways yeah. of doing it. And, and I, like I said, I, I really think, you know, Doug DeMiro is probably coming around and, and uh, like I think he'll do really well still. 
But I think BAT, regardless for him or whether it's PCAR market who makes it pretty easy for, for BAT to be my choice, you know, it, it, other platforms are going to struggle to get, you know, that kind of action and that kind of like hype on one car, you know? Yeah. Especially if there, if there is a downturn that's significant, I can see a couple of these platforms just saying goodbye. Uh, I don't see PCAR <laughs> making it if, uh, if things get bad uh, because, the, yeah. you know, everyone's going to go to the one or two platforms that really are solid and have good reputations. And let's face it, that's BAT and Cars and Bits. Um, right. Well, there's we a reason, like Mark, in my opinion, but, there's... Um, sorry, no, sorry go to go off there, but there's a reason, you know, people talk about wait times for, for BAT. Obviously yeah. there's a, there's a reason for that. It's like, if you go to find, go find the best club in town, you know, one place you walk in and they, they sit you down right away. But then the other place is like, got a line outside the door going around the corner. Clearly that's the club that everybody wants to go to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, well, people, and people, to that point, I mean, anyone who's ever been in the nightclub business knows that, you know, it's the way you run it too. It's, you may not have anyone in the club, but making yep. everyone wait is how you get people in line. If you just, even if you have the capacity, uh, it's best to make people want it. Uh, and I think BAT totally. does that because BAT could totally handle the capacity. They could totally sell more cars on any given day and get people in much oh, they more quickly. Absolutely could, but, but they, they deliberately st- they deliberately make people wait so that that becomes the thing. Okay, it's the line around the block at the at the empty nightclub. Frankly, I think. Hundred um, percent. Yeah. Hundred um, percent. All right, guys. Now is the time to play along. What do you think will be the results of this kind of weird Frankenstein three point oh liter nine eleven? It's not a three point oh. Uh, do you just try to make that zero into a little six with a magic marker, and will that get more money? Uh, we will find out. Now is the time to put your bids in the comment and play along with us. And uh, we will, we're going to go into the future and see if there's still a planet Earth. We will see you guys in <laughs> just a minute. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for. Gotten Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you gotta check out my channel, The Rally Show. Oh, oh, this car. I am driving a 2020 Lamborghini SVJ. This car, watch this. Hundred and fifteen mile an hour turn like like it's nothing. Yeah, like it's nothing. <laughs> like uh like my bank account would be if I've tried to buy that car, but uh holy cow. <laughs> I know, right? SVJ, that thing is so bonkers. Welcome back to Bit Nerds, everyone. We are now in the future. Uh, oh, we, boy. boy, it's amazing what happens when you fire up that flux capacitor, isn't it? Michael deep. Some, some of this wow. Right oh, now. wow. Yeah. You, when you, when you open the door and you get out and you look at the world, sometimes you don't recognize what you see as is yeah. the case here. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys hit the subscribe, like, or notification button yet? If you haven't already, please do so now. Smash. All right. Smash. It's going to be fun to look at the, uh, at the comments to see what, uh, what people said, see if Ross Turchhouse or any of our buddies, uh, how they did on their bid, uh, any of our usuals, family guy, yeah. 5150. Oh man, we've got so many great followers. I love you guys. I love your comments, uh, in the comment section. That's what makes this show fun. All right. So let's find out what happened with this P car market. Nine eleven with the 3.6. What happened? Yeah, the I, the comments are going to be very interesting, JP, because they're going to probably remind us that we didn't take our own advice. And that is something you say with great regularity, that when it comes to Porsches, especially cars that have been, quote unquote, built, the motor drives the price. And, you know, it's like we talked about this motor and then we ignored it and just judged the car. Um, as such, uh, what we're looking at is this 1976 911 Carrera 3 liter with a 3.6 liter 964 motor. And you judge the car as a $52,000 car plus the platform because it's on P car market. I also drank that Kool Aid and went 66,000. Our guest, Andrew Pappas, said 70 grand. 
lo and behold, JP, you and I are eating crow today as P Car Market sold this car for $125,000 on 45 bids, thus cementing your original take, which was not on this car, but on plenty of other ones that we covered, that the motor will help drive the value of the car and let's go through it a 3.6 liter motor uh especially a built one um, is a forty thousand dollar motor is it not um so if this is a fifty or sixty thousand dollar car and you add the forty thousand dollar motor then you are flirting with six figures and this car is basically comfortably over six figures um it's a rare car to begin with but it's rare still when you consider all the, the equipment that's on there p car market found uh somebody willing to pay the money and this car met its reserve and sold um I won this one between you and I. Andrew Pappas won this between the three of us. But the reality is none of us were close, JP. I mean, $66,000, I barely got half of the value that this car actually sold for. So um, definitely egg on my face. Uh, dubious victory, to say the least. Um, I'm surprised that number still seems high to me because the car doesn't look like it's spectacular. I don't like that big hole under the passenger side headlight that is probably leading to some oil cooler or whatnot. Um, but I do love the color. I do love the motor. I bet this is an extraordinary car to drive. Uh, this would have been a fun car to pick up and, and smooth out, put some more period correct seats that are in there. Um, I don't know. There's a few things I would do to make this car my own to make this car a little bit nicer. Uh, but $125,000 seems too high a price to pay. $125,000 to me seems like a car that's done. And I don't look at this car and think of it as a done car. I look at this as a car I would love to, as uh, Buddha would say, un-F and, uh, and make it nice, make it my own. So I don't know. It's a, it's a bit of a head scratcher, but I go back to your original take. We should have considered that that's a pretty expensive motor that's in there and that it was going to bring more money than our low bids. We really were poo-pooing the market the uh, p car marketplace and we paid the consequences so let us have it in the comments jp what do you think of this result yeah i it, it's bonkers and that's the thing about p car market man it is all over the place where they found someone to pay that kind of money for this car i just don't get this one uh, we keep seeing air-cooled cars though bringing crazy money and yes um, yeah. anytime you have a hot rod um, and you have a badass engine in it that always tends to bring a lot of extra money but it's just such a weird combination in this kind of pseudo collector car with that three liter mid-year thing even though it's got the wider I, you know we talked about that before the break um you know, and look, I, I've been very bearish about the economy and I'm still very, very concerned about things. Um, yeah. and I, you know, one thing I was thinking about over, over the break, um, you know, it's like you see reactions to markets in places where, where people are more market savvy with the crazy stuff going on in the banks with the feds, interest rate, you know, hikes, all those sorts of things. Um, anyone that's paying attention, paying attention to, certain, you know, market segments or, or investment, you know, stacks, basically people that are paying attention, attention to finance react very quickly to financial stuff going on in the news. Yeah. Whereas, you know, people who are just out buying collector cars that aren't looking them as an investment class. They're just like, I want a hot rod with a 3.6 <clears throat> liter in it. They're not paying attention to all the other stuff. And they're like the last ones to react. So as you look at classic cars as an investment class, you can kind of say, all right, there's a little bit of a buffer there. You'll watch your crypto account immediately react to uh, interest rate <laughs> hikes. Um, but yeah. the value of your classic car, that trickles down to the people that are buying and selling them uh, casually. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see if the prices on these do start to correct or collapse, um, how long it will trickle down to the classic car market. This particular car is a tough one to judge. Um, yeah. Again, I'm going to continue to be bearish. I think that's just the safe place to be. I would rather, like if I were in the market for something, uh, you know, even if I were in the market for a, a classic uh, 911 right now, um, and I had that hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollar price range. This is not a car that I would have bought. Uh, no, no, you, no way. J, 
JP, you would rebuy your two cars and still have money left over, would you not? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean I, it, you yeah. know, I don't like that exercise. The exercise is what car would you buy with yeah. that budget, right? There's a bunch yeah. of other cars that I would spend 100 to 150,000 on there you uh, go. way before this one. This one yeah. just seems weird to me. Bunch of red flags. Um, you know, again, like you said, it's probably probably a pretty darn cool car and awesome to drive around. But if there is a big price correction, this is not the one you're going to want to be holding the bag because nope. of all the weird Frankenstein stuff with it. But Hey, you know, again, like we say all the time, if the apocalypse happens, you may as well be cruising the apocalypse in a cool car. Uh, what do you yeah. guys think of the results of this? What do you think of what's going on with the market? Uh, yeah. Is there no end in sight to the air cooled cars or is this just some kind of, I don't know, are we talking about a, uh, is this inflation? I don't know. Uh, oh, jeez. Michael Deeb said he, he's got a very, he just took the black pill. He's got a dark look at all this stuff. Um, we'll put it in the comments below. We want to say thanks to our good friends over at God and Porsche of Las Vegas. Uh, we, uh, they, but, you know, before we get going, actually, Michael Deeb, we had uh, Cars and Cafe last weekend. Um, yeah. And it was How awesome. Was it? One of the best shows we've probably ever had. Uh, our friends at God and Classic, uh, Steve brought down a, 964 RS, a Euro RS, and holy uh, cow, that car actually rivals Rami's 993. Uh, Euro is it RS. Gary's car? Uh, it is. Yes, he just got it. So yeah, yeah, he rolled that down. That was really cool to say. And they see, and then they also have their um, they've got that that step side Volkswagen Transporter. Yep. 60 something. I don't know what year it is, yeah. but it's got that 2.4 yeah. liter uh, Porsche engine, and it's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's everybody a- had a great time. The weather was perfect and lots of people showed up. So uh, thanks to everybody for showing up to Cars and Cafe. Um, yeah, and we you was- and you you and Rami both went live driving to Cars and Coffee yesterday. It was really funny. Rami was in his uh, Defender and you were rolling down your cab and it was just hilarious. My feed blew up Sunday morning and I was <laughs> definitely having FOMO. Listen, you guys narrate on your way to Cars und. So I'm glad everybody had a really good time. Well, we'll be having a really good time at uh, the Pit Stop Open House coming up here at Loop to Cult right. Weekend, so we'll start uh, throwing details on that out there pretty soon. Yeah. Bid Nerds is partnering up with uh, DWA and maybe Marked and a bunch of other cool cats, and uh, should be a good time. Yeah, sounds good. All right, guys, we will see you tomorrow with the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Bye. i got to get the closing part. No!